st bog standard front to back team fight coming out from EDG. With LGD, they are poke central right now. They've got themselves the Zoe, the Jace. They are looking to kite you out, get your health bars down, and just basically make it a battle of, of, of attrition. They don't want to 5v5 realistically at all because they will just get melted. They need to start the fight before it's even begun. Yeah, for the side of LGD, they want to try and keep EDG. LPL veteran organizations. And there's, there's more on the line here than just the, the standings as of right now. But certainly for EDG... It's like, yes, you got an advantage, but what are you doing with it? And that's going to be the biggest test, I feel, for LGD in this series. And, oh, we're going to have a fight. 2v2 in the bot side. Garvey's in trouble. Flashes away, but one more auto should do the trick. Garvey ticking down, but he survives oh! on barely any ah! HP. But the Q goes through and the feathers pierce his heart. And that is the issue when you're having your top lane. I do apologize if you can hear my dog in the background. Uh, Millie gets very stressed when things like post happen. Uh, Garvey also gets stressed in these situations, as you can see. Completely panics and whiffs in the lane phase, goes down there. Um, do you know, it's it's been a stressful game so far. Horrible, so horrible understand. to play against. You can do literally nothing. You lose CS, you lose pressure. Whereas on the other side, if you're able to get ahead and you get ahead of the curve in terms of power and you're already at, at a full item as we're coming up to the you know 15 minute mark, you're able to go toe to toe with something like the Kaiser. You're able to keep oh, up the, the pressure. Land. Should Garvey be able to throw a Void Seeker over, you always have that Blade Call, at the Blade Call, sorry, the Feather Storm. To be able to jump yourself to safety in the midst of a team fight. So trying to set Viper up early so that he can be that primary carry is always going to be a good start. JJ going to find himself the second Herald of this game. But it's a minute until this not next break. For the early burst damage, you're not necessarily looking even to be the Assassin. You're looking to be that crit AD carry. Herald dropped in the mid lane though. Should give priority to EDG. They're looking for a fight as the solar flare goes wide. Flash away from Mako. Now they can get onto the dragon. Flandre kind of trying to keep everyone away. But LGD are not going down without a fight here. The re-engage, but Chance misses the hook. Gonna be rooted up. And Quay, barely any HP to work with as he has to back away from the dragon. Yudu Boy gets a trouble bubble in. And health bar starting to get low on either side. Colt goes in. Chance goes golden, keeps himself alive. And it's pure chaos in the dragon pit. Garvey trying to survive. But one more auto as he flashes over the wall. It's keeps still alive. Time. And now Mako on the backside is Colt looking for more. But this Olaf is on a tear. Uniboy under the dragon. But he's one versus three. And cut down by the Chaos Storm. Dragon goes the way of EDG. Dragon was just putting down so much damage. You can see Quay goes down to about 200 HP before that fight even begins. It was a smart move from LGD. Like... This point. And let's bear in mind what we talked about earlier. LGD don't actually want a straight up 5v5 and they definitely don't want Uniboy to be uh, caught out without a hope or a prayer here. He's going to try and get away. Has Flash available, but I don't think there's any getaway. Maybe should have just held on to Flash, honestly, because 3v1, not much hope of escape. Yeah, I mean, even when you just look at the runes, it tells a story. Hang on a second here. Scout's trying to get away with a recall. Chance isn't going to let him, though. The Chaos Storm comes on down, and there's a TP coming through as well. Scout flashes, oh, no. dodges the hook, keeps himself oh, alive. It no. gets one in the 1v2, and now Quay chased out of the fight by Flandre. Cult is here, though, and suddenly the numbers advantage to LGD. But Cult's gone too deep, too fast. We'll survive for now. Flandre trying to keep this fight going as Viper. I guess he's just going to settle for chickens. That's the advantage we're going to find, I guess. They try to go for a pick, but look at the map state. Look where everything is in terms of, you know, the, the minions and the waves. That's going to, yes, you gain a kill, but you lose one. So it's a one-for-one one trade, and you lose a tower, and the rest of the waves are pushing it's into not you. not inherently OP, but it adds so much extra room for skill expression for the top players in the world. Viper is able to take out half HP because Cult thinks he's at a safe distance. Boom! One little octave down and he's not at a safe distance. Half health. They gain the Gat Dragon. and This is perfect. This is textbook from EDG. They take the Dragon. They can now transition to pushing in the mid lane, getting vision control over this top side and trap pressuring the Baron. Look at this. EDG really know how to build the pressure. And I want to clarify something that was said your earlier defense, on. Your defense of this Baron is effectively all on Uniboy or, you know, Quay getting a steal. This is so, so uh, difficult. Flash in, start, they're yeah, going to kill him. Quay does not get to go for a steal here. Mako is having none of it. Back into the pit they go. EDG, they're just going to rinse and repeat this. Anytime LGD comes anywhere near, they're going to be obliterated. This is just a massacre from the side of EDG. LGD 
overall, this just feels, this was just absolutely beautiful, Viper. He has full knowledge of where Garvey is. So he sets up the feathers, flashes in, and uses the W to call them back. That is honestly so mechanically big brain from Viper. It's so beautiful to watch him. pick up for Viper, who is just flexing at this point. We talked about him being a three item AD carry. Well, he's got three items and a BF sword to boot. Garvey now has stepped way too far forward once again. We'll sidestep the Solar Flare, though. There's a little overzealous on the Solar Flare, to be honest, from Mako. But they're still just going to be able to go for a dive here. They are so far ahead. They don't need to... What tower? They don't see a tower. They're not afraid of this one. Garvey goes into the back line. Somehow the life steal kept him alive for a second there. But now Garvey is just going to get chased down from Scout. Scout even decides to commit the flash for this one. Uniboy flashes away. But Flandre is basically invincible. So he's going to be fine. And now onto the in -hip. They go. EDG are done with this one, Penguin. They're not stopping anytime soon. For EDG, you, the, 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 the call from them was just like you said. We're now at the point where our composition is stronger. Straight up. Doesn't matter about towers. Doesn't matter about team compositions. Ours is just better. They slow yeah. themselves in into a nice and correct game. Great start to this series. Beautiful stuff. And the speed at which they accelerated with that Baron. Apparently, EDG stands for end the damn game because they closed this one out beautifully and they show LGD that playing against EDG is no trifling matter. For LGD, that was